What is it that you think of when you remember your first interaction with a human? Is it how small and weak they looked, barely two meters tall and possessing only just enough muscle to lift their own bodies? Or was it how naive they were? Having colonized their first exosolar planet only 10 years ago, walking around the various interplanetary stations with no idea what anything was, maybe it was how primitive their ships look, hard metal, rough edges and exposed jump drives, well, for me, it was none of those things. For me, I fought in the battle for Hilica, a small world which was the target of the Republic's planet-hopping campaign against the Silicates. The planetary bombardment had vaporized a huge amount of water, already abundant on that dirt ball. Raining back down all day and night, it turned what seemed like the whole planet into mud and swamp. Even in exoskeletons, it was difficult to move, and power for those was hard to come by thanks to the space battle. There was little food, it being a silicate world, they had terraformed it to conform to their biology, not ours. The water had to be filtered, or the foreign bacteria would kill us. And as always, our objective was further away than planned, meaning we ended up walking for days on end. It was during this campaign that the humans joined in the war, and their first foot soldiers were dropped to the surface. I didn't see one for months, but I wasn't impressed from what I had heard. Undersized, under armed low tech, too stupid to realize they were outgunned, it sounded like they would do little but get themselves killed. One day as we traveled, we stumbled into a silicate ambush. Hard to blame us, the area was far from safe, but we hadn't seen combat in a couple weeks. We were exhausted from having to walk in our suits unpowered to save energy cells, hungry from half rations, and quite irritable for being given another mission so far away. Most of the platoon was killed. We had no cover save crouching in the mud, and our suits took precious seconds to power up. The only reason I'm here today is because a human platoon, which had been a few kilometers behind us, caught up after the last of us had been pinned down for the better part of an hour. They charged in like maniacs, no powered exoskeletons, chemical explosive weaponry. It was insane to watch them. But with their help, we drove the ambush force off. Most of our platoon was gone, along with a large number of humans. I had given up. Our unit was too small to accomplish anything. The energy cell for my suit was almost dry. I was almost out of ammo and I saw no reason to go on. A human walked up to where I had collapsed in the mud, grabbed me by the arm and tried to pull me to my feet. Come on, he said as he pulled, unable to lift me and my exoskeleton. We got a mission to do. You're crazy, I replied, refusing to stand. There's no way we can be of use now. Only one way to find out, was his response, giving up with pulling me up and instead looking down at me. My suit is almost dead, I argued. Then leave it here, he said. I haven't eaten a real meal in months. Me either. My weapon is almost out of power. I have a spare. Look, I can't do this without my gear. I'm half your size, the human said, suddenly fixing me with a glare. I'm wearing armor not rated to stop weapons fire with half the penetration of what we are facing, using a gun that operates on the same principles as the one my grandfather used, on an alien world where I can't eat the food or drink the water. And yet I just saved your ass. I guess your people aren't as good warriors as I was lead to believe. That got me mad, so I stood and glared at him before rejoining the column, now an amalgamation of survivors from the two squads. The cycle repeated several times over the next week or so. I would feel like giving up after a firefight, or another piece of equipment failed on me. But he would always be there, looking at me, daring me to give up. I wouldn't give him the satisfaction. You sure you can fight without your fancy energy gun? He would taunt me as I dropped my weapon to pick up a spare human gun. I wouldn't say anything. Are you anything without that suit on? What will you do without armor? I never said a thing. I refused to give this human the satisfaction of feeling superior to me. His race was young, stupid and insane. I wouldn't dishonor my people by letting him think he was better than I was. Eventually we reached our objective and took it. There was fighting, but not a lot. The silicate fleet had been broken and fled from orbit, leaving the planet to us. With whatever that damn building that was so important taken, we were finally scheduled to be taken off-world for rest and reintegration with a new unit. I found that human, still somehow alive after all of that, I looked him right in his eyes and told him, 
I have passed your tests, human. I have proven myself time and time again. I fought without armor, with primitive weapons, low on energy, with no food in hostile environments. You didn't think I could, but I did. What do you have to say? I did believe in you, he said, catching me off guard. I knew you could do those things. It was you who didn't believe it. You had given up fighting an enemy you couldn't see, so I gave you one you could. I didn't respond, clearly not believing it. If I didn't believe in you, I would have left you sitting in the mud. I stormed off, refusing to listen to any more of his excuses for how he treated me. I met up with my surviving friends from my squad and told them the story. Many of them had similar stories, humans who pulled them out of the mud and got them back into the fight. I continued to deny it till I got back to the rest station, where we were to relax for a few months before being sent back out. Other humans were there, and when I told them the story they all nodded saying something like, I had a sarg like that, wouldn't let me give up. Eventually I accepted it. Like it or not, this human got me back on my feet and got me walking again. I gave him a call and asked how he knew, why he chose me. You are a fighter, he responded. I could see it in how you looked around. Even sitting in the mud you scanned the horizon for enemies. But you felt you couldn't fight them. They were over there. You couldn't see their reaction, feel good about beating them. So I gave you someone to fight who you could, me. You wanted to fight. You just didn't know how. I had given up. No, you thought you had given up. You thought that because you couldn't face your enemy, you couldn't fight them. All you needed was a push in the right direction, and you did the rest. Those words will stick with me the rest of my life. By taunting, pushing, and questioning my ability that human had done what no amount of propaganda could, he got me to push back. That was the first human I ever met. And that is what I remember of humans, not their size or strength or technology, but their refusal to give up. Even when I felt I'd given up, that human showed me the way.